Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the number of diagonals of a polygon. So let's get started with the following problem that will lead us to today's lesson. The measure of an exterior angle of a regular polygon is 45 degrees. A. Find the number of sides of the polygon. B. Find the measure of each interior angle. And C. Find the sum of the measures of the interior angles. So let's get started with part A. So to find the number of sides of the polygon, we can look at the exterior angle. And as a matter of fact, that's the only thing we have. 45 degrees for one of the exterior angle. So we can imagine the following here. We have parts of the polygon in which one of the exterior angle is 45 degrees. So we don't know what kind of polygon it is and we want to find out how many sides it has. So what is the relationship between the exterior angle and the number of sides? Well, as we learned in the previous YouTube video, the exterior angle or the measure of one of the exterior angle is 360 divided by the number of sides. So all we need to do is rearrange the formula. So we can rewrite that the number of sides is equal to 360 divided by the measure of one of the exterior angle. And after substituting 45 for E, we obtain N equal to eight. So now we know that our polygon has eight sides. How do you call this type of polygon? It's simply called an octagon, where octa means eight. Now that we found out the answer for part A, how do we find the measure of each interior angle? Well, we know that the relationship between the exterior and interior angle is that these two are supplementary, right? Because they form a linear pair. So that's fairly simple because in order to find it, we all need to do is subtract 45 for 180 degrees, which means that the measure of each interior angle is 135. Could we have calculated the measure of each interior angle using a different type of formula or a different approach? The answer is yes. In the last YouTube video, we learned that the measure of each interior angle is 180 times n minus 2 divided by n, where n represents the number of sides. So we do have the number of sides from part A. So all we need to do is just substitute 8 for n. And once we substitute 8 for n, we obtain the same exact angle measure, which is 135 for each of the interior angle. Okay, so now for part C, we want to find the sum of the measures of the interior angles. And how do we do that? Well, we know that the measure of each interior angle is 135. Well, we know that this is also an eight-sided polygon. So we just simply take the product of those two numbers. And here we end up with 1080. Again, last time we applied a different method or a different formula to find the sum. The formula is 180 times n minus two. So here we substitute eight for n again. And again, we obtain 1080 for the sum of all the measures of the interior angles. Now that we have solved this problem, let's now look at the relationship between diagonals and number of sides of each of the polygons. But let's first define the word diagonal. So according to a definition, a diagonal of a polygon is a line segment connecting one vertex to any other non-consecutive vertex. Non-consecutive means that they cannot be adjacent because then you will end up with the side of the polygon itself. If, for example, we look at the triangle here on the left, how many diagonals can we draw? Again, they're non-consecutive. Well, the answer is zero. We cannot draw any diagonal inside a triangle. Now, if we look at the square, how many diagonals can we draw here? Well, it turns out that here we can draw two diagonals, as you can see here. Again, we're connecting the vertices that are non-consecutive. 
Now, now we have a pentagon here. That's our next regular polygon. How many diagonals can we connect here? Well, there are five diagonals that we can draw inside a polygon. And finally, what about the hexagon? It turns out that there are nine diagonals that we can draw inside a hexagon. But the biggest question is, what's the relationship between the number of diagonals and the number of sides? So let's analyze this now. Let n be the number of sides of a polygon and let d be the number of diagonals in a polygon. So a good method to use in figuring out the formula here or the relationship is to look at the pattern. For example, for a triangle, we have n equal to 3 and d is equal to 0. So three sides, zero diagonal. For a square, we have four sides and two diagonals. For a pentagon, we have five sides and five diagonals. And for a hexagon, we have six sides and nine diagonals. So is there a pattern? So if we, for example, focus at one of the corners here, we know that there's only one coming out, right? And here we have two diagonals coming from the corner. And here we have three diagonals coming from the corner. We can already see that there's a relationship here, right? Um, so we have four sides, but only one, right, comes from the corner. So what's the relationship in this case? Well, we have n minus three, right? For example, if we look at the pentagon here, we know the pentagon has five sides, but only two diagonals emerge from one corner. And again, that is a difference of three, right? Because five minus three is two. Similarly for the hexagon, we have six sides, but then we have here three diagonals that emerge from that corner. So again, the relationship is n minus three. Then one more thing we can think about is that, okay, we don't only have one corner, right? We have, for example, four corners here. And here we have five corners or vertices. Here we have six vertices, right? And each time we have n minus three number of diagonals that emerge from that vertex. So what we should do is actually multiply the n minus three by n. Okay, now that we multiply the n minus three by n, would that make sense to leave it like that? Well, the answer is no, because if we, for example, let's say we substitute four for n in here, what do we end up with? Then we have four as the number of diagonals. If we substitute five for n, then we end up with 10 as our number of diagonals. And if we substitute six in here, so six minus three is three times six is 18. So we have 18 number of diagonals. What do we notice each time compared to these numbers here? Well, we notice these are the doubles, right? So we kind of have to divide that by two and it makes actually sense to divide it by two because even though we have for each vertex n minus three, n minus three and n minus three for each vertex, but then we multiply that by the number of vertices, but keep in mind that the diagonal is being shared with the other vertex as well. So we're actually counting it double and that's why we need to divide it by, by two. And that's basically the relationship between number of diagonals and number of sides. So let me formalize this now. So the number of diagonals of a polygon is always going to be n times quantity n minus three and everything divided by two. Let's look at a few problems now. What type of polygon has 35 diagonals? Show all your work to justify your answer. So what this means is that we don't want to draw it, but we want to actually use algebra to figure out what type of polygon it is. So again, here we want to use our formula, D is equal to N times N minus three over two. Then we substitute 35 for D, and then we get 70 is equal to N times N minus three. So let's distribute the N. So here we get 70 is equal to N squared minus three N and then we bring everything on the left side of the equation, which will give us n squared minus 3n minus 70 is equal to zero. So now we have to think about two integers such that they add up to negative three and multiply to negative 70. And here we get that n plus seven times n minus 10 is equal to zero. 
So that is actually equivalent to the n squared minus 3n minus 70 equal to 0. So that means that n could either be negative 7 or n is equal to 10. Obviously, we cannot have a negative number for the number of sides. So we are going to reject that answer. And therefore, the answer is n is equal to 10. So what kind of polygon is that? Well, that is simply called a decagon. Let's look at another problem that is slightly more challenging. The total number of degrees in the sum of the interior angles of two regular polygons is 1980. The sum of the number of diagonals in the two polygons is 34. What is the positive difference between the number of sides of the two polygons? So what we can do here, we can let n1 be the number of sides of the first polygon and n2 be the number of sides of the second polygon. So now we should write an equation based on n1 and n2. So here we can write that 1980 is equal to 180 times n1 minus 2 and then plus 180 times n2 minus 2. Where does that equation come from? Well, the sum of the interior angles is actually n minus 2 times 180 in general, right? But we want to add them up, right? Because that's the sum of both the sum of the interior angles of the polygons, right? And together they come up with 1980. So then let's divide both sides by 180. So here we end up with 11 is equal to n1 minus 2 plus n2 minus 2, which can be further simplified to n1 plus n2 is equal to 15. Let me actually solve for n1. n1 is equal to 15 minus n2. Now the problem continues and says the sum of the number of diagonals of the two polygons is 34. So how do we express that mathematically? We can say that n1 times n1 minus 3 over 2 plus n2 times n2 minus 3 over 2 is equal to 34. So again, let's solve for n1 and n2. So okay, so what can we do next here? Well, if we look at this problem here, we have n sub 1 equals to 15 minus n sub 2. What we want to do now is actually substitute all of the values that show n sub 1 with 15 minus n2. So let's do that. Let's now get rid of the parentheses by squaring the first parentheses and distributing the negative 3. So there's already something that we can do here. If you look closely, uh, we have plus 3n of 2 and minus 3n of 2, and those we can actually cancel. Uh, then we can combine n2 squared plus n2 squared and we can also combine the numerical values and we obtain the following new equation. There's one more thing we can do here to work with it. Basically is to divide both sides of the equation by two. Once we do that, we get n of two squared minus 15 n of two plus 56 is equal to zero. So now we want to think of two numbers that the sum is negative 15 and the product is 56. It turns out that those two numbers are 7 and 8, okay? That means that n of 2 can either be 7 or it can be 8. If n of 2 is 7, it turns out that n of 1 is 8. How do we know that? Because we can back substitute the 7 into this equation over here. 15 minus 7 is equal to 8. That means that if n of 2 is 8, then n of 1 is simply 7. So basically, it doesn't matter because the two polygons are going to be an octagon and a heptagon, okay? But does it matter which one it is? Does it matter if n1 is 8 or 7? The answer is no, because if we go back to the original problem here, it says here, what is the positive difference between the number of sides of the polygons. So it doesn't matter, we just want to find the difference. And how do we do that? By simply taking the absolute value of those two numbers, the seven and eight. And again, if we take the absolute value of the difference between n1 and n2, no matter if it's seven or eight, the answer will always be one, okay? 
So the answer to this problem is simply going to be one. So that's basically it for today's lesson. And again, uh, today's most important part of the lesson is this formula that relates the number of diagonals with the number of sides of the polygon. All right, so thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.